In this video, I'm going to be showing you the metric dashboard. First thing is that um, metric includes a few default layouts uh, for the dashboard. And the ones available to you are going to vary based on your store. So if you sell WooCommerce subscriptions, you're going to see a subscriptions layout that's available to you. Um, but also the actual layout here, what kind of reports you see, what data, will also vary based on your store. If you set up Google Analytics, you're going to see here the unique visitors and conversion rate. Uh, while if you have the cost of goods plugin, you're going to see the net profit here. So it's going to look different for everyone. Um, but the idea here is just to tailor it for your store. So I'm going to start by showing you the included default layouts. Here's the default one, which covers some stats like your net revenue, your orders, uh, new customers and items sold, refunds. Uh, here we have Google Analytics data. Uh, some KPIs and subscription stats and then down here um, some data about different customer segments which I'll talk about a bit later. Uh, here's the customers layout which focuses on new customers in the period, uh, how many customers viewed the site and then the average lifetime value um, and some other stats about segments. As you can see here this is a demo store so <laughs> the numbers don't really make sense uh, to only have 36, 38 views but 200 uh, new customers. Uh, so just ignore that and then subscriptions which focuses on subscriptions in this period how many new ones there were uh, this is a segment for active subscriptions so how much those are worth so let's go back to the default one and now at this point we might want to customize the layout we just might not find some of these stats useful like refunds we just don't want to have here so to do that i'm going to click the customize button then you'll see all of these cards become editable and you can delete them. You can add new ones down here with the new card. So let's start by just deleting the refund one. Uh, we might also delete the new customers item sold. We might delete these for the KPIs. Delete them. And let's also delete the subscription stats. Keep those and we'll delete these two. So now I've just got six here. I might actually want to make the Google ones come first. So I'm just going to drag them up here to change the order. And then I'll just save that as my custom layout. Uh, and then you can decide if you want to share the layout with your whole team. So if that's shared with the whole team, anyone on your team who has a role of analyst, editor, or admin uh, will see your layout up here. Uh, otherwise, you can just keep it to yourself if it's just something that you want to use and you don't think your whole team needs it. For this one, I'll share it with my whole team. I'm going to save it as new. Great. Okay, now at this point, I might want to add a new card. So I'm going to customize again, and then down here, I'm going to click the new card button. The first thing you're going to see are a few different card types. Uh, and this is always changing, so as we add more um, types, you'll have more options here. Uh, but today, I'm going to just show you the available ones. So report, you've already seen it. Um, you can basically choose any of the different reports and it'll give you the total, some gross stats and a small little chart. Um, so we might want to have the gross sales and then you can also change the color. So you can enter a custom one here or we'll just choose from a pre-built one. So purple, and then we can insert it. So now we have the gross sales here. Um, another card that's really interesting is the KPI one. So it takes the stats from the reports and then provides you some KPIs, which are key performance indicators. So we might want to show the average customer lifetime value. So that's to calculate that, it's going to look at customers that joined in the period that we're looking at, um, how much they've spent over their lifetime, and averages it out. So an important thing to note, with reports, KPIs, those are using the dates up here in the top right. So it's looking at that period. Uh, so in this case, gross sales is $11,265 in this period and then you can see it's got some growth numbers three point minus three point nine percent that's being compared to this period up here okay i'm going to add another new card the heading one is really simple it just can help you with organizing the layout to suit your needs or trying to make it clearer for your team so i might put here kpis and then you can choose to keep it at half the size so it'll just take up half the page um, or you might want to make it full size by default it's going to be full size so i'm just going to click insert and then I can drag it up here. Oh, there we go. Um, great. So I might just save our changes now. We can see what it looks like. So we've got up here some reports. Down here, we've got the gross sales and a KPI and a custom heading. Let's customize it again. 
and of course if you want you can just click here to edit an existing one you might want to just change the color here Keep it blue um, okay and we're going to click new card uh, one of my favorite card types is the segment one I'm going to try explain it but it can be a little confusing at first but it's really really powerful once you get the hang of it so after you've chosen segment as your card type the next part is choosing your resource now a resource pretty much means orders customers subscriptions products any data type on your store um, in this case I'm going to choose customers then you'll be given a list of segments to choose from now segments you can learn about in the help docs and some other videos but the idea is that you filter your customers or your orders just filter your data by attributes so we might want to filter customers by how much they've spent we might want to filter orders by the payment method and in doing so we can create a segment metric includes a bunch of suggested segments uh, and a lot of those are customized to your store so for example the VIP segment metric will automatically look at what your customers tend to spend and then what a VIP customer looks like which is the top maybe five to ten percent of your customers and then it will create a segment based on that data uh, so if we chose VIP we can see 13 customers are in that segment and then we can choose the stats that we want to display um, so we might want to make it average lifetime value so now we know our VIP customer has an average lifetime value of 800 we can give it a different color and insert it now I'm also going to add a new one but this time I'm going to choose orders and then I can choose these are also some suggested order segments so we might want to know how many guest orders are we getting so it's 67 uh, but also what we can do is choose all stats so this is really useful if you want to look at all the stats for a segment so here we have um, and of course these stats depend on the resource so for orders we've got the gross sales total number of items average order value and the average order items so I'm going to insert that that's going to take up the whole width of the page and then I might get rid of that and then I'll add a new one this time for customers again and choose a different segment so these ones that are here right now you're gonna see them as well on your end these are all suggested ones um, but if we went and I'll get out of this if I just save the changes now and now if I go into the customers area over here I'm just gonna click segments up the top so you can see all those suggested ones are here and this page just gives you access to stats about them all at once but I might go here to customers and then create a new custom one so we might want to say okay all customers where the email contains at yahoo.com right now I'm going to click segment and then I'm going to save this as a new segment yahoo customers and I'm going to save now great so if I go back to the dashboard I click customize again and then down here just delete that I create a new card choose segment choose customers you can see here Yahoo customers has come up at the top so I'm going to choose that and now we can just display stats about that custom segment we just created so we might want to also display all stats for customers it's going to give you the total lifetime value so what those customers spent in their lifetime uh, the order count average lifetime value and the average order count we'll make that one make that color and then we'll insert it so one of the things I do want to highlight, I'll just say about changes, is that with customer segment, um, with segment cards on the dashboard, depending on the type of card you've used, it's going to show you stats maybe that are from all time or maybe from just that period. So to explain this in a bit more detail, uh, if we have the guest orders here, it's looking at orders from all time. So you can see up here all time. So even though we've chosen April 1 to April 23 here, the segment itself won't use those dates because that's just not how segments are done um, with segments if you wanted to do something like that you could say I'm just going to delete these filters we have from before I could create a new segment that says order is created sorry in the past 30 days and then I could save that as orders last 30 days and then I could use that segment um, and then it's going to take into account the last 30 days but with the dates up here they aren't going to be considered uh, also with the customer segment it's not looking at the 61 customers here are not just 61 customers that were also created in this period 
so it says all time that means it's the 61 customers that are in that segment um, for the lifetime of your store but on the other hand if I customize again and then add a new card segment but choose product as my resource and then we might just want to look at variable products I think we don't have any for this store though so we'll just say simple products and then I want to display the stat for the net revenue now that one as you can see after I save it says in this period up the top so that means it is looking at those dates and it's saying that you've sold 11,200 of simple products in this period so it can be a little confusing at first um, but hopefully it'll make sense after you use it a little while the last thing I do want to show that's quite cool when you click customize you can actually choose to copy a share URL now what this is going to do is copy to your keyboard um, a URL that you can give anyone in your team and as soon as they visit that URL they're going to have access to the new layout so I'm just going to paste it in here so you can kind of see it so it's a little bit of a long URL but all you need to do is send that to a team member and then if they go to that URL which I'm going to do now it's going to apply the layout for them um, but I've already chosen it here so I hope uh, you are excited about custom dashboards as much as I am um, but if you have any questions or any issues with it please do reach out and I'd love to help you um, get a lot of value out of this feature thank you